Now, the beginning of the year also means the beginning of a term. Yeah. And uh, yeah, those of us who are parents know what that means. It means school fees. Mm -hmm. It means books. It means backpacks. It means yeah. planning school lunches. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of expense that comes with educating your children. But um, I have to say, school books yeah. and materials, textbooks, mm -hmm. the cost of that alone mm -hmm. is sometimes close to the fees you, yeah, you pay. Yeah. It, it's a big expense, and I think a lot of parents are feeling the pinch, mm. you know, because you, you pay your school fees, but then all of these extra costs come in as well. Yeah. It makes things very, very difficult. Yeah, so yeah. Um, there are lots of questions as to why mm. it's so expensive to mm. get textbooks mm. for our children, particularly if you are a parent whose children are in a private school, you know, because you've got to pay outright yeah. all of those fees. So let's take a look at this report by our colleague, uh, Daniel Sakite. The Christmas festivities as well as the New Year celebration is over and most activities are returning to normal. For parents, they would have to dip their hands into their pockets to cover all items on the prospectus given to their awards as academic activities resume from January 10. As the reopen date draws closer, parents have been visiting stationery shops to get items including books, footwear, uniforms and bags for the awards. The environment in the central business district of Accra was a busy one with lots of activity at the time of City News' visit. However, the activities were not translating into huge revenue inflow for shop owners as some parents who had come to buy books and other items for their awards had either run out of cash or deferred purchasing due to increase in prices of goods. Uh, I spent about 300 students. Yes. Wow, that's quite expensive. And I couldn't even get the things I wanted. The list I made, they were quite, not a lot. But as compared to last year, the amount I estimated, I, I couldn't get, get the things as I wanted them. Yeah. That has been rising prices as we used to buy them. The yeah, prices of things have been increased a lot. Yeah. Last year, how much did you spend? Last year, I spent there at three. I spent about 600 CDs in purchasing all the things. But today, I brought 700 CDs, and there are a lot I'm still to buy. So I wouldn't spend less than 500 CDs purchasing the other ones left. I bought a bus, I'm 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 a bus, i am a bus 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 some vendors who spoke to City News lamented the negative impact the current economic situation is having on their businesses as they record low sales. They want the government to urgently address the economic challenges confronting the country. Students are buying. You see, people have, uh, let's say, neglected uh, the uh, celebration of Christmas. They didn't celebrate. They are using the money to buy. They are buying, but they are complaining. Uh -huh. They are buying, but they are complaining. Has the economic situation in the country impacted your business? Actually, it has. Actually. Because formally... Uh, when the price was not all that high, people do patronize than now. Now. Uh -huh. So, you know, when it affects us, it affects the parents as well. So I may say it has an impact on the economy, our, our business. I would say last year was massive as compared to this year. And I don't know what's going on, seriously, because I was expecting parents to come and buy and kids following parents. But this time around, they are like, Charlie, no, it's, the business is a bit slow this year. Um, I pray the dollar comes down for things to go normal, salary to be increased, and as well, yeah, that's all. The duty, you should, you should see to it, the duty. When the duty comes down, we too will reduce the price. Uh, they said the dollar is down, but when you go there, it's the same thing. No difference. Meanwhile, the Ghana Publishers Association has attributed the increased cost of textbooks and other stationaries to inflation rates and taxes on materials for printing. They say only a waiver in taxes on materials used for printing will help ease the burden on parents. You know, when it comes to publishing, uh, it goes with printing. 
when we are done, as probably when we are done with everything in terms of our editing, our illustration, proofreading, whatever it is we do, we we have to print the book. Now, the materials for printing are quite expensive. Previously, we were doing some purposes were printing outside. It is rather better, cheaper printing outside than printing locally because of the materials we use in the printing. All materials we import or the printers import for the printing are taxed. But however, when you are rather importing a book per the Florence Agreement, when the books is coming, there is no there are no taxes on the books. So it becomes cheaper printing and bringing it down to, to us. So we the appeal is that we, we have been engaging governments that if they could do something to with some of those taxes from the ink, from the papers and whatever you can think of, it will make the local printing cheaper. And I believe that it will rather uh, grow the industry than people going outside to print it. You know, as some of the parents were speaking about how much they're paying for just textbooks, mm -hmm. there were there were some some murmurings in the studio yeah. from yeah. from our colleagues who are yet <laughs> <laughs> to embark on this journey of educating your child, <laughs> of expressing a lot of surprise that yeah. they didn't realize you can spend that much on textbooks for one child. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, you can mm. and more. Yeah. Because there are some textbooks that are not available yet yeah. that you still have to buy, and when you've got multiple children. Mm. It's, it's a significant yeah. expense. And remember, you've got to do this every year mm. because so, as we move up, the books change. So, so I know some families that, not even in the nuclear family, but in the extended family, mm. they share textbooks. Do you understand? So that it's like, oh, mm -hmm. your cousins mm -hmm. have already mm -hmm. passed here, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. these, they have these textbooks. Mm -hmm. We'll go and collect and it. Go and co you have to. Yeah, we'll and, go and, and collect it. And just pray that yeah. there, there isn't a new edition a that you're told to uh -huh. get to acquire. Uh -huh. Because, yeah. you know, the school gives you a list every mm -hmm. year of the mm -hmm. books that you have to get. Yes. And they'll say, oh, this is, you know, this is obsolete, or this yeah. is done. And you may be able to get away with acquiring a textbook from someone who is you know, moved on. Yeah. But the workbooks and exercise books, oh, you'll you pay. have to. Because yeah, the workbooks, they actually yeah. work, you work with the, in them, yeah. you know, yeah. sometimes. And, but it's a lot. It's a lot. But Kokui, one of the things that comes to my mind, and I'm asking myself, um, what's the conversation about this? Is that in other jurisdictions, a lot of the material is now online. Exactly. And, and so. Save to this. save <laughs> this kind of Printing, situation, right? You know, but it's, but yeah. it almost seems as though there is a there is a a business to be made for some people in the printing and production of textbooks, right? To the extent where it's like it is no, in nobody's interest within this uh, ecosystem. Yeah to get rid of the buying of textbooks, yeah. do you see? And the parents are the last people on anybody's mind in terms of consideration, yeah. right? It's like it benefits the printers, the publishers, it benefits whoever's writing, the, 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 the authors of the books, it benefits some schools who may be behind some of the production of the, you know, it, but the last people and the, the people who are the least considered are the parents mm -hmm. who have to fork out cash like, yes. every term, every year to cater for their kids, mm -hmm. right? And it's almost like parents are a cash cow for this industry. Because they know that, oh, er, parents will struggle and find a way. Yeah. They want to educate their children. So they'll they find will a way hustle to pay and, for and find a way. We will we 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 make our, yeah. we'll do our business. We you know, and I think that the GES and the Ministry of Education really need to consider the advancement of our systems, mm -hmm. right? COVID taught us a number of things. Yes. That the online platforms are a great space to build education, mm -hmm. right? It makes education more affordable. Yes. It makes it more accessible. Yes. And it's like you... you the level of equalization is spread even further because mm -hmm. you, now all you have to do is have access online yes. and you have access to 
a plethora of material, everything. you know, and all of those kinds of things. So, so the, I think we need, to see, honestly, we need to really look at this thing properly we do. and seriously. Oh, what, what's the name of um, the guys who have developed this device where they've put all the curriculum on one device and mm. it can be, so that maybe there's a school in a rural area, mm. they can just connect it to one computer screen yeah. or monitor yeah. and they can, they can see all the curriculum for classroom work. Mm. I've forgotten their name, but we've had, we've hosted them at least on, on CBS. I know we've hosted Is them Is it the e-campus people? No, it isn't e-campus. No e we'll, we'll, fi we'll find okay. out. But okay. there, are, there are Ghanaians in this space mm. who are doing things like that, yeah. trying to make education more accessible and and uh, you know they're just not getting that support mm, that you mm, think they mm, should get yeah. for being so innovative yeah. and it's a shame and like you said yeah. once somebody's business yeah. is printing and yeah. they're making they were a massive killing. revenue they are making a killing. they're not in a hurry uh, no, 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 to no, no, transition no. into anything no, else you know no. but one might think well okay but if you're able to offer an online version of your books yeah. you can still charge people a nominal fee for accessing a it and you'll fee. get more yes, participation exactly so you can still benefit Make from, revenue that. from that. And we still will need some books in hard copy yes. format for certain yes. things, you yeah. know, as I mentioned, um, workbooks and things mm. of that nature, supplementary materials. But you can do so much more, yeah. you know, but uh, I guess interest is, is what trumps everything interest at the end of the day. Interest is what trumps everything, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so we're talking about materials parents have to buy. And of course, you do this in anticipation of the year starting or the term. And yes, indeed, for basic schools, the term has started, right? So last week, Monday, um, was a holiday. So Tuesday was the first week that basic schools officially reopened mm. on the 10th of January. Let's take a look at how the first day was for some schools. Basic schools across the country on Tuesday resumed academic activities. However, the first day of the resumption was marked with low attendance. Municipal Director of Education for Kole Klote, Joyce Osai Apenting, in an interview with Citadus, said that she is hopeful that attendance will improve in the subsequent days. Joyce Osai Apenting further expressed optimism that the new academic year will be better than the previous ones. We had already put in place a schedule for our officers to monitor the schools. So we have an officer going to one or two schools to find out attendance of learners as well as teachers. And then also looking at how prepared both teachers and learners are to start the academic work. And so today we've all been on the ground. Others are still there. Some of us left the field earlier because we have other work to do in the office. Yes. And so uh, all schools are in session now and we are ready to start the academic work. As we are moving forward, we do expect to do the mistakes we did the previous year. We are looking for improvement in our schools in terms of academic performance, in terms of resources that we need. And again, I would say the relationship between learners and, and teachers. We have um, a lot of what we will need for the academic work. They came in bits, but if we put all together, we are ready to work with them. Meanwhile, Education think tank Africa Education Watch believes that government must play a key role in ensuring a smooth academic year. Speaking to City News, Senior Programs Officer of Africa Education Watch, Divine Pe, underscored some challenges that disrupted the previous academic year. He stressed that government will have to be forthcoming in releasing textbooks as well as providing funds to cater for education needs in the country. From history, we know that government may not even be releasing all the 11 million. The execution rate most of the time is 60%, which tells that uh, would, government will need to do a lot. In the face of this extreme budget cut, government will have to uh, play fidelity to its own budget that it has allocated to basic education by ensuring that, first of all, there's a timely release of the fund, and then also 
there is also 100% execution rate where all the fun as much as possible should be released. We don't want to see the situation where capitation grants continue to be in arrears and health teachers will have to use their own money at times to finance the education or even at times if the heads could not even get to finance it means that uh, teaching and learning materials that are needed in the school could not be bought and that would go a very long way to affect effective teaching and learning in our schools. All right, so that was a look at how the first day of uh, school reopening happened and basic schools indeed that for parents and for people who are in the educational mm. ecosystem there are, there's you know multi-layered issues right yeah. anyway so we'll be talking to Divai Nikbe who is the senior programs officer at Africa Education Watch mm. let's find out from him um, the kinds of things that they have taken note of and we know that they do a lot of good work in assessing our schools and taking note of some of the deficiencies in the sector. Very good morning to you, Divine. Very good morning. Thank you for joining us on Breakfast Daily. It's a pleasure. Um, now, one of the things I'd love to find out from you is about the comparison between private and public basic schools. Um, I know you do a lot of work, Africa Education Watch, in monitoring our school system, um, but could you just talk to us about some of the things that stick out to you with regard to our, our basic schools in the private sector and in the public realm? All right, thank you, and good morning to uh, your viewers. Uh, when it comes to public and private education in Ghana, we have, over the years, uh, realized that uh, public school participation in delivery of education in the country is growing at a very high rate. Uh, this more particularly because of the uh, poor nature of our public basic schools. Mm. And then parents begin to prefer the private schools to the public schools. So we have seen that in terms of growth in the number of schools, public schools are increasing a lot, especially in the urban areas in Accra especially, I've seen that we just have few number of public schools growing over the space of the last 10 years, while private schools, their growth has even been more than 300% for the last 10 years. So it's most particularly about facilities mm. and parents are, if from, if parents are wanting to have good access to education for their own words and the environment counts for them. And it's not only about the environment. We notice that uh, most of the time, the performance of the private schools in BEC also looks to outweigh that of the uh, public schools. So yes, they have fairly good facilities. Their environments are child-friendly and welcoming. In terms of uh, teaching and learning material, they are well assisted. And then also in terms of student performance, we've seen that there's a fair uh, performance on the side of this private school compared to the, uh, sorry, the private school compared to the uh, public ones. Okay, thanks so, for that. But uh, so all of these come with an extra cost, don't they? So um, as you said, the facilities that private schools have, the educational materials that parents have to buy, even the attention to students, so the, the level of engagement between teachers and students, and even the teacher to student ratio in the classrooms, yeah. you know, all of that comes at a higher cost and is being a burden to parents. So you've got kind of this catch-22 where parents don't want to send their children to public school, which is a more affordable option, which is practically free, you know, um, yeah. but they want something better for their children, but it could cost, in some cases, an arm and a leg. So, but we still see, as you were saying, a lot of parents still making that choice. Is it really that the option of private school and the benefits it comes with far outweighs and outstrips what is being offered by public schools such that parents are willing to bear the brunt of these additional costs regardless of the impact it's having on their pockets, their finances? Yeah, the growth of uh, private education in the country is just a testimony to the fact that parents want good education for their watch. So uh, as much as it's coming with a cost, not necessarily because they have the money, but because they don't have an option to have an alternative 
uh, go to school when it comes to private participation, public participation, sorry. So they just have to sacrifice their little income, the family to just see their walls through to uh, the, the public schools. You know, especially in Accra, if you look at Accra, you look at the private participation. The, the closest school to you will not be public school. The closest school will be a private school. And this more particularly also because of land issues in, in Accra. And we've seen that the private schools, they have more than 300% through the last 10 years. While that of the, uh, the, 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 the public one, the yeah, group has been very minimal. I think that's the last time we checked, it's about 10%. So basically, it is not because the parents want to have their money spent on private education. It is that because they want good education for their world. That's right, they said, you look at the, uh, the ratio in the classroom, teacher people ratio in the classroom. We are talking of over congestion in our schools when it comes to the, uh, the urban area. In the rural areas, you will not see uh, con congestion issues, but you see that they are probably learning under three or dilapidated uh, structures. Mm -hmm. In our assessment of the education sector medium plan for 2018-2021, we realized that there are more than 5,400 5, public schools that are still under trees, dilapidated structures, or under sheds. And we're talking about mm -hmm. about 4,000 uh, primary schools that are not having junior high schools. So you look at all these conditions and the option the parents have is that they have to get access to private education. And these are some of the challenges. So when we're talking about free compulsory universal basic education, the, the challenge remains that it does, it does not look like it's even free entirely. It doesn't look, once it is not free entirely, it has to be that you can't even make it compulsory. And so we still see some children that are not in school, but hardly will government take action against the parent because you can't enforce the compulsory aspect when the environment in that public school is not conducive enough uh, for you to say you were the parents who feel comfortable sending their awards to the school. Mm. You get to school environment and we're talking a bit about the past, uh, since 2019 that we've started a new curriculum. Well, there's a few schools that have received the textbooks uh, the last time we checked mm -hmm. in the mathematics, English, and then creative arts, only 30% of these textbooks have been distributed. So when these issues are present in your public schools, then it makes it very difficult for parents to fully participate in it when it comes to uh, the, the decision between private and then public schools. Hmm. So, uh, Divine, a uh, quick one here. Uh, I wanted to find out, so um, the drift from public school towards um, uh, private school, uh, what, what do we need to do to stem the tide and to, to either slow down or stop entirely the drift from public school to private school, considering that it, it, it will disenfranchise people automatically, you know, and then at a point where you can't afford it, literally, then your children will not go to school. What do we need to do? What does the government need to do? The most important thing is to increase investment in education, more especially the capital investment, CAPEX. Uh, but unfortunately, we are seeing the growing of less investment in our public education mm. has been reducing all but over the years and this year the 2023 budget we have seen that compared to the last 20 years of investment in education the 2023 investment is the worst we have seen in the last uh, three years this is because it, we government has international benchmark to meet when it is financing education um, in terms of GDP, we are supposed, if you look at the education framework for action, we are supposed to invest at least 4% of our GDP into education. So the recommendation is spend 4 to 6% of your GDP in education. And then when you are looking at this from the government annual spending, it is 15% to 20%. When you look at the 2023 budget, the education budget, the investment we have done this year is 3.09 percent that's oh. far below the late benchmark which is four percent mm. and then when you look at this from the total annual spending for this year it is 12 percent 
and that is also far below the 15 per the least which is 15 percent we are talking of that we haven't even met the least which is 15 before targeting the the highest threshold which is 20 percent mm. so in terms of the investment investment has been declining over the years mm. and if we want to look at it even further how the investments is affecting especially basic education then you need to look at which sides of the uh, education area that government is investing in more you know government spends its money in three areas we're looking at uh, compensation and salaries and then also we're looking at goods and services the compensation and salaries that's where government used to pay uh, teachers or educational workers and then the next group is that government used part of the money for goods and services that's where teaching and learning materials uh, mostly bought. So the administration of the school is done on the budget line, line of goods and services. And then the last category of spending is the capital expenditure where infrastructure is built. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look at it and see how government is spending its money, especially for that of the capital expenditure, which will have to go in to improve infrastructure in our school, then you look at the trend and over the years the trend has been that it is more disadvantageous to basic education. And let's be mindful that it is head fund that is mostly used to improve infrastructure in our schools. So if you want to examine how get fund is financing our basic education, secondary education, and other subsectors of education, you examine the trend. Let's look at just um, this particular year, how government intends to distribute the get fund formula uh, among the the various subsectors of the education uh, sector. Basic education is going to have, out of the 1.4 billion that government will be realizing from the GET fund, basic education will be having approximately uh, 20%. And over the years, it's been a trend in 2022, basic education had just 60%, and secondary education was having 43%. In 2021, secondary education was having 66%, and basic education was having 16% of the GET fund. So you have seen that the money, the GET fund, which mostly goes into improve infrastructure, it has been tilted towards secondary school education. So we are not surprised that we have challenges when it comes to uh, issues, when it comes to issues. Mm. Yeah, especially infrastructure in our basic education mm. area. Interesting. I think, yeah, we have tilted the money that is meant primarily to improve infrastructure, we have shift, uh, shifted that money basically to senior high school education. Mm -hmm. And that's where we see the leftover of uncompleted school buildings at the basic school level. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, our last check in the 2022, uh, 2021 education sector performance review, mm -hmm. we've seen that there exists 5,400 plus schools that are under trees dilapidated still churches. still schools oh, yeah. under trees yeah the, oh yeah, gosh we, 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 the progress that we are we are making in terms of improving uh, infrastructure in our school at this rate it will be very difficult to even remove all these 5400 plus schools under trees mm -hmm. dilapidated structures because in our previous medium term target the target was that you look at government projected to Build within a space of four years. That's 2018 to 2021. Government projected to build 336 kg mm -hmm. to 324 primary, 437 junior high school. And how many? How the, many have we built? Good. At the end of the four years, government has built 7,000. Uh, sorry, 795 kg, 700 primary. 864 GSS. Now, it looks like we have even overachieved the target we, we right. uh, set in four years. But the, that's not a challenge. The challenge is that even the target you have set, it doesn't look even more like something that is very low target. Because even the, the achievement that we have done, although it looks like we within the four years we have done that, act, we have overperformed on our target. But when you look at it, the total Classroom built within the space, the average is 790. And if you take it that we are having 216 uh, districts in the country, it yeah. translates that one district within a space of four years is building only uh, three classroom blocks. Wow. So, mm. yeah, so if we take like this, that, yeah, so it means that we, when you want to divide with a ratio of the number of districts we have, 
it tells that within the four years, even it looks like the target we have set for ourselves, we have overachieved it. But on a whole, within the four years of 2018, 2021 million term framework plan, a district was just building uh, one, one plus okay. per year. That, that's how we, 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 we take it. it. All right. We tell you that we, the progress you are making in terms of uh, infrastructure building in your school is not even it's quite encouraging. Simple. Thank you, Divine. Yeah. I, I mean, I, we could talk to you about this for mm -hmm. a, a very extensive period of time, but we, we appreciate you joining us this morning for Breakfast Daily. Um, hopefully, we'll touch base with you again on these educational matters so we can get more, more data from yeah. you. And again, that was Divine Fe, who is with Africa Education Watch. Yeah. He was breaking down some numbers for us with regard to our expenditure mm -hmm. on education and what government has done so far, infrastructure-wise, and why the as as um uh Kwekudi, you were saying why mm. people are opting for private education and what yeah. we can do to kind of reverse the trend or, or stem the tide but you know he did he did say you know looking at especially get fund expenditure that more is being spent on secondary education and yeah. we know why yeah. there's a there's a specific policy mm. on free shs mm. um that has been basically the bedrock of yeah. this government's education you know focus so mm. It's no surprise to hear that that more emphasis has been put on secondary education but the problem is you've got more students who start off at the basic level yeah. so if you don't take care of that first you have to take care of what that. are you sending to yeah. the next level yeah exactly you know, it, it's the foundation has to be yeah. right before the second level yeah. can be can be anywhere yeah. near right yeah which is why we're seeing the issues we're seeing yeah exactly and i think that um it's it's not difficult to fix i just think that the government needs to be motivated about what it is that they're trying to actually do, you know, in terms of it shouldn't be um, piecemeal, picking yes. one over another kind of thing. There has to be a holistic thinking exactly. that says we are solving the educational sector in, in, in a holistic manner, but it's in a holistic manner for a future purpose and plan. That's right, it. you can't just do piecemeal things no. for the sake of politics, exactly. which is what we always do. Uh huh. We, the, and that's where the challenge is, is because it's for the sake of politics. Oh, the national it, development plan. Mm? This is what you need. Yeah. So you know that in twenty years, this is where we want our education system yeah. to be, yeah. and it will take doing this for the first four years. Yeah. This one, nobody wants to do that. Yeah. Because it doesn't benefit them for the time they're Thank in office. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, is it about the term you're in office, or is it about the national good? Yeah, you so... Know, so over we, the years, we have failed to plan mm. because everyone is thinking, oh, in my term, I want to do this. Yeah. Whereas, if we had all stuck with a plan from 1992, yeah. by now, by probably... Now, we would have made immense strides. Immense. Yeah, we would have made immense strides. Anyway, you know what they say, right? Oh. If you fail to plan... You plan to you fail. You plan to fail. Well, don't forget that this show is actually interactive, and we mm -hmm. do want to hear from you. So use the WhatsApp line to send us messages, your thoughts as a parent, how you feel about what's going on, the experiences you're having, your challenges, difficulties, which part of the country do you live in, mm -hmm. and uh, what's happening in your part of the country. All right, so 0204-447033. Later on, um, as the show progresses, as the conversation progresses, we will give you opportunity to actually call in as well. Okay, so we'll let you know the number to call on. And uh, we'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Breakfast Daily will continue short. <laughs> We're still having a conversation on Breakfast Daily about the education sector, basic education. And uh, just trying to find out what things people, parents are going through, where we are as a country as far as the education system is concerned. We're going to cross over to the Ashanti region. Our colleague Hafiz Tijani has brought to us a report on the private school patronage um, 
you know, or within the education sector. What is it like in the Ashanti region? Again, our WhatsApp line is 0204-447-033. Do let us know what experiences you're going through, regardless of the part of the country that you live in. As far as your wards are concerned, um, the challenges with textbooks, challenges with the education sector, generally speaking, and all of that. Of course, don't forget that the show is sponsored by Skywater and Creamy Plus. And uh, thank you very much to them as well. Let's take a look at this report by our colleague Hafiz Tijani. We'll come back and continue the conversation. Zainab Abdul Hamid is returning home after she dropped off her children at school. Two of her children attend the Baum Village School and she has come to pay for the new academic year fees and also buy some stationery for them. The fees and cost of other services the school renders have gone up and parents like her are complaining. With the cost we are adjusting, the routines have a bit hard nowadays, so we are adjusting. Last year was, we paid, I think last year was okay, but this time around, because of the cost of the living, the prices have increased. Mister, My husband always come for it, but he was saying that the price have come high. Like he said that they have increased, now is a 35, like almost 35 million. Am I right? So. The increasing prices of food items, toiletries, fuel, and other essentials used to run schools like this one is forcing authorities to also adjust. For here, if you look at um, our adjustment, we have had about um, uh, 20 to 30 percent increment with that adjustment. And you know, even from the government side, minimum wage has been increased other you know utilities and other operational expenses and um, rates and properties all the municipal people are also increasing their tariffs so we have to break even so we had to break the gap with the parents and see how best at least um we we, we can judge all and um, make sure um none of the parties uh, get disadvantaged private schools like this one went through a lot of difficulty during the COVID-19 pandemic, with most of them laying off their workers. Managers of these schools say a similar challenge is staring at them with the current economic situation. And in the COVID, we are not even out of it. Coupled and slapped with uh, this uh, increment in prices of goods and services. In fact, uh, we, we, we have to cry and we are still crying. So the government has to come in, especially the Food and Drug Board Authority and other responsible authorities should come and have a fair idea of some item prices so that our market women and other business uh, men and women can have a fair face of prices and it will be uniform. For some parents, the adjustment is normal considering the academic performance of their walls. It's worth it because... I've seen so many changes in those cases, academically excellent. If things are increasing, they have to increase their prices. And you see that the school too is nice and they are teaching well. well. You come to their uh, graduation, you see how children are wise. You see, they are, their way of doing things is very different from other schools. When you are paying for something and you see the effect as positive, with the positive effect, it helps you, it encourages you. Director of the Bank Village School, Paul Osaitutu, wants the government to put in place measures to save businesses like his. The Ghana National Council of Private Schools says parents should bear with its members. We all take into consideration the kind of um, challenges, times that we are all going through and we will understand and appreciate that if parents will definitely buy, get into a kind of compromising um, let's say, situation mm. so that we all will negotiate and find a better way to address this challenge. All right, so that report there brought to us by our colleague Hafiz Tijani. And um, Kokri, as you can see, uh, <laughs> 
it's really across the country, you know, the yeah. various, um, you just see it repeated over and over again. Um, it's getting increasingly more expensive. Um, it's, it's, the levels of frustrations are felt across board, yeah. you know. Um, now, wherever you are watching us from, if you do want to call in, we would love you to call in and uh, share your experience with us. And so we'll give you the number to call us on um, at this point. Uh, you can call us on, it's a 0556, 0556-203276, 0556-203276. Do give us a call and, and share with us what the experiences that you have, 0556-203276. Do give us a call. Let us know, especially if you're a ward or a parent, um, and let, let us know your thoughts and your experiences that you have been going through, you know, in, especially at this time, in this period, what's happening with you, yeah? Okay. So, yes. I mean, I, I think a number of things need to change, a hmm. number of decisions need to be made by government yes, you know they, and like they, you said and i really love what you said earlier you have to fix the basic level first you can't you can't jump up the ladder and fix you cannot middle of the rung in well, middle rung of the ladder once the you foundation know, fix is, the, is fix bad, the bottom part forget it you know and because yeah. if you get the bottom part right yeah. you have less to worry about going up going up you the know foundation but, has to be right yeah you don't right. you don't touch the bottom. You leave the bottom, and then you jump into the top and say you're fixing SHS, you Won't know. Work. But then the primary is feeding the SHS. Exactly. So at the end of the day, what have you done? You know, yeah. yeah. And I, I think the whole conversation about the online aspect of things, we really need to visit that. Hmm. Introducing um, the online to the entire academic system. You see, if if you watch. Many of uh, public universities have already done well by going ahead to create online portals yeah. for admissions, yeah. for prospectus access, you know, and all these. They, they've, they've done that at the yeah. very top level of the educational ladder. But I think we need to, and government needs to be deliberate about it. Mm -hmm to go back to the basic level yes. and start fixing things from up there, from, from, from down there up, you know, yes. so that we can, we can do, we can, we can have, um, you know, the system more coherent, you know, in, in, in that manner, yeah. I agree, I agree, all right. So yeah, we're talking education, we want to know what we can do to make it better. Mm. If you're a parent out there or a guardian or somebody who has to educate younger mm. people. Whether mm. Some people are even paying for their siblings, you yeah. know, trying to put them through school. Yeah. So it's very tough. If you're somebody who sponsors somebody's education, you know, pays for their fees, um, their upkeep as yeah. they're a student, let us know your thoughts on all this. Mm. Um, our WhatsApp line, you gave it already. Yes, it's 0204 yeah. That's, That's the WhatsApp right. line. Yeah. Um, if you want to call, mm. and the phone lines are open now, you can call us on 055-620-3276. Again, the number is 055-620-3276. Yeah. Call us and let, your, let us know your thoughts on what you are experiencing as a parent, a guardian, um, an education sponsor, somebody who takes care of a student in the basic level, yeah. and what you've been experiencing. Or maybe you're in the education sector yourself, yeah. and you have thoughts on these issues and the challenges are, that there are, okay, and um, you want to contribute to the conversation mm -hmm. kindly. And maybe there's things that we are talking about here, and we are missing certain things, mm -hmm. and you want to fill in the gaps for us, and, you know, and so on. So you can also call us as well. Again, the number is 055 Three two seven six. All right, to give us a call. We have a message here. Uh, it says here on our what's from WhatsApp. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Saka Mohammed, a teacher in administration. You guys have said it all. Failing to plan, hence increasing the funding, as at the SHS at the expense of KG Primary and GHS. And the uh, uh, beautiful uh, summary by um, beautifully summarized by asking where would the products of the SHS 
come from. Mm. Hmm. In the office, it is serious. You wonder where we as a people, why we as a people don't re uh, reason regarding these things, or is it a deliberate action hmm. that's being taken? This is coming, he's in the Western region. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Saka Mohammed, for sending that message through. Yes, yeah. indeed. Mm. It, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, an interesting... You're feeding your point. SHS with what kind of with products? Shabby. You know. I mean, it's, you, one would think with all of the brains we have yeah. in this country, yeah. we've got people who are PhD holders yes. in in educational yeah. related yeah. professions, and yeah. you just ask yourself: so, with all of this expertise, mm. how, what how can we not get this to right? What to yeah. what end? Yeah. Many of the people in the echelons of power have been educated abroad, yeah. send their children abroad to be mm. educated, know what pertains in other jurisdictions, even in public education. Mm. You know, not just in private education. But maybe that's also part of the challenge: the fact that. People hmm. who are vested or supposed to be vested in our national development extricate their kids from the system that they oversee. That they manage, yeah. Do you see the problem? So if your children or in your future, your offspring, are not in the system, mm -hmm. then it means your skin is not in the game. Yeah. Which means you can take whatever decision that you want because it doesn't affect your children. That's and true. maybe we need to have that conversation as well. Nobody wants to have that If you're a manager of the economy, in whatever sector, there has to come a point where you are not, mm. um, you know, permitted to extricate your kids. Mm. Yeah. You've got to have skin in the game. Mm. Uh, no, isn't that what no. they say, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how do you... That's the only way you know how on a daily you, basis. Exactly. What, what parents will exactly. experience. Otherwise, you know, because even in private school, I mean, there are issues. It's not like it's smooth sailing. No, it's not smooth so sailing. So you can imagine. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I'll, I, I wonder, okay, I know, and I think uh, Divine talked about the fact that mm. even now that we say F-cube, mm. it's free, right? Mm. Free compulsory mm. universal mm. education is free. There are still some aspects of it where either parents may have to pay some cost or you, you find that it's free, but the lack of quality is so bad. Yeah that you're paying for it in other ways. Yes. Either you have to supplement with some kind of extra tuition or something. Yeah. But, so I, I wonder, yes, F-cube, F-cube, again, we've used it politically. Yes, we, we have free basic compulsory education, free SHS, yes. We, we're giving our secondary students free education. But it's to their detriment if we don't have... A certain quality. A certain quality. Yeah. So yeah. why can't we just... Put up our hands and say, you know what, this is the goal. This is what we want to achieve. We don't think any student who is at the basic or secondary level should have to pay for school. Mm. And that is the ideal for mm. us as a country. Mm. But currently, mm. we cannot afford mm. to do that wholesale kind yeah. of education. Those who can pay should pay something. Yeah. You can subsidize. You can say, okay, government will pay a certain amount, yeah. right? And there are people who genuinely, and we know, cannot yeah. pay anything. They can't buy uniforms. They can't buy, I mean, their children, if not for F-Cube or free SHS, their children would yeah. be at home. Yeah. But there are parents who, as ev is evidenced, can pay thousands of cities a term to send yeah. their children to private school because yeah. they want a better option. Or send their children abroad. Or send their children abroad. Mm. Would those same parents be willing to pay a fraction of the private education cost to a public school? Yeah to help improve that public school and feel more comfortable sending their children there? Mm. Is it a possibility mm. so that the facilities can be improved, so that there can be smaller class sizes and more facilities for the kids, more classrooms, yeah. more options, build more public schools in communities so that the kids can go to school closer to home instead of waking up at 4 a.m. to drive yeah. so far because yeah. you've got to find a good school, you in know, your area. Yeah. in your area. I, I think there has to be some kind of a logical, coherent manner in which we develop our education system that yeah. allows for people not to have to travel 20 kilometers Hello. every morning to go to school. It, it's, it's almost <laughs> irrational to see Listen. that after 65 odd years of independence, people have to wake up in the morning and drive 20 so kilometers plus to yeah. take children to school. Do you see? Uh, yeah. we, 
why not go to school in your community? Yeah. Okay, L between a kilometer and maximum five, you should be able to attend yeah. a decent school. school. They should be able to walk. It should be, yeah, they should be able attend to a decent school. Yeah. You know, and this is probably what we, we need to be focused more on. You know, especially at the basic level. Because for me, I think that even when you go to secondary, you can say, listen, secondary is the level at which you are now developing people who are mini adults, yeah. right? So there has to be the experience of going further afield. There has to be the experience of uh, meeting people from different yes. walks of life. Yes. And so yes. that whole experience then allows you to say, okay, you know what? At secondary level, if you have to go further, no problem. Right. So we then look at that. Ex further in outward expansion. But at a basic level, community-based schools mm -hmm. are critical. Yeah. You know, so people shouldn't yeah. have to be able to get up and say, I don't have a choice because exactly. the five schools around me yeah. are so poor mm -hmm. in quality and overcrowded. That I ha and overcrowded that I have to go miles mm -hmm. across the city to take a child yeah. to the school. That thing does not make sense if we say that we are developing a certain kind of future of the country. Because in 20 years, in 20 years, mm. anybody in KG is now a voting adult. Mm -hmm. Anyone yeah. in KG is now a voting adult. What kind of a voting population are we, we preparing in the next 20 years? Hmm. Do you see that thing? Yeah. So if we are saying we are developing a certain kind of a country, honestly, you and for the politicians who are watching, right? Think about it. You hope to win an election in twenty years' time. What kind of people are you expecting to queue up to vote? Hmm. What kind of people with what kind of knowledge? What kind of intellectual capacity? What kind of educational background? What kind of foundation would they have? acquired and developed in 20 years Ask again. if we're going the direction in which we are currently going mm -hmm. you know yeah we've got another message from our, our friend saka who says one we have to come back to work on the basic level and that will guarantee good products for all future levels mm. and two make sure every politician in ghana has a kid in a public basic school or in ghanaian schools mm. um, another texter says good morning city tv i'm really enjoying the discussion thank mm. you we're glad you're enjoying it and uh, keep your messages coming in zero two zero four 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 seven zero three three that's the whatsapp number yeah okay. yeah no i i think look for me it all starts from the political agendas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are different political parties, yeah. especially those in the duopoly, <laughs> you know, have yes. regarding education. We need to do better. We do. Okay, we need to do better. It's right? for our future. Yes, it's, mm -hmm. no, you say, think about it. Yeah. You know, Kukri, even if it is, MPP today, right? MPP hopes to still be able to win an election yeah. in 15 in years to come, mm -hmm. in 20 years to come. You still hope to win an election. And there's a certain kind of electorate that you're hoping mm -hmm. will be the people that you're governing. Maybe, so you can't... Maybe that's the point. And maybe that's the... Yeah, I, I think I know where you're going with this. Maybe. I think I know what you're thinking about. Because if you have a populace... Yeah that isn't well-educated or yeah. properly educated. Yeah. They can easily be manipulated. And maybe that's what the problem is. Ah. Hmm. So maybe there's also a, a grand agenda of sorts. Hmm. Keep them simplistic and not as educated. Hmm. And, you forever and then you have forever have control of them. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's another angle. That's another interesting on angle. That note, <laughs> <laughs> on that note. On that note. Yep. Thank you for those of you who contributed to our discussion, sent yeah. your messages. And uh, for those who tried to call, hopefully uh, we'll be able to take some calls tomorrow, God yeah. willing, during the show. Um, yeah. Fortunately, we're out of time for this particular discussion. Yeah. Um, but you can keep the conversation going. You can still send messages on social media, hashtag breakfast daily. Mm. And um, yeah, keep the, keep the conversation alive. And I wish... We need a whole overhaul of our education system. A and total yeah. overhaul. 
I just Total wish that would happen sometime yeah. sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah. yeah.